to another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Madi. And today, in the G-spot, that is guest spotlight, do not get nervous, we have the very beautiful, very lovely actor, model, Broderick Hunter. The crowd goes wild. So <laughs> go wild, go wild. Yes, we have live studio audience today, too. They're going wild. <laughs> hear from all over the place wow thank you <laughs> thank you you over there look your your uh resume is a uh, pretty dang long so before we even get into the episode i just have to like let all these people know where they've seen your beautiful face multiple times because i was impressed okay when uh our girl elisa was like look i'm introducing you to this like model over here i was like oh he's a model model he's not just like an ig model okay oh wow Thank he you. is the face of Ralph Lauren Polo, appeared in music videos with Sierra and Chloe Bailey, a guest starred in episodes of HBO Insecure, where I definitely like, of course, remember you from. Uh, you've won awards of sexiest man on Instagram <laughs> by People, Business Insider and Harper's Bazaar. Like, wow. It's a lot of cosigns. Look, I'm just saying. OK. And then you were like discovered in 2011 mm -hmm. for modeling, though. But I feel like you now have like classes that you teach and you've like really created your own like personal brand. And like part of what this episode will be about is um, self image and like putting yourself out there because it seems like you've mastered the art of it. So before we get into the deep stuff, uh, we start off with like a little intimacy question on when did you first fall in love with yourself? What was that mm. moment? Take us back in time. Think of when you had that look in the mirror or that hardship that you had to overcome and you were like, I'm freaking dope. I love myself. Mm, first time, first time I fell in love with myself. I was, I got off, I got off a basketball injury mm. when I, I was going into, I was going into college or trying to go back into college. And uh, I came off of an injury when I was out of town going into my uh, college uh, scout, my scout, uh, scout camp, basically. Mm -hmm. And I was very close to getting in, and then I got hurt. And I went back home to my uncle's house at that time when I was, uh, this was in Florida. And I looked in the mirror, and I was like, what the heck, Broderick? This could be potentially your, you're done with, yeah. you know, your, your exit from basketball. What do you have now? And I looked, I said, all I got is me. Mm. All I got is me. So I said, like, okay, well, let's just see where this goes. And then two years later, that's when modeling came. Oh, that was, I mean, that was fairly quick, right? But two years feels like a long time when you're in it. Yeah, because, you know, you're trying to recover as an athlete. Any athlete would be able to rec uh, relate. Like, getting back into something that you're, uh, that you love, mm -hmm. that you know you want to get into, is very difficult when you don't have the your body working with you. Yeah. So when my body stopped working with me, I knew that I could no longer really put the reliant on what I was able to do. Mm. I had to focus really on like my inner self because I wanted to be a basketball player. I wanted to be in the NBA. Yeah. And I'm like, well, what would being in the a NBA do for me? I was like, well, okay, it can provide me of income. It can give me status. I can meet people, blah, blah, blah. But that was all just a result of just playing basketball to reach something. Mm -hmm. And I realized like, do I really love this sport because I love this sport or do I just love being in the sport. Mm. So uh, I later made my realization like, well, I got to love myself in, in any capacity. So yeah. I, I let basketball go and then I fell into fashion. Okay. So mm. 2011, like you're discovered as a model, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't set out to like be a model. No. Someone just felt like, oh, he's an attractive person. Well, it was <laughs> like, how do you become a model? <laughs> That's a, okay. That's a great question, and the thing about it is no. Well, I'm gonna answer. I'm answering two. Go ahead. How I became a a model or a working model. Yeah, working right? model. That part. A working model. Um, it took a process for me to become a working model, but I was reached out on Facebook by a photographer, uh, Tyron Red. He said, "Yo, dude, I think you have a great look," and mm -hmm. it was off like prom photos. So, oh, I wow. had something that. Somebody saw nobody else like really offered me that outside of photographers mm -hmm. offered me any opportunity to really like come in and like say, hey, I want to shoot you. So he did. And then the photos turned out great. So I from there, 
I was like, okay, this is something that I want to be a part of. I want to definitely try to do this. See yeah. how, see if I can get paid and see if I can actually make this into my career because I could have done a lot of things in my life, but to say like, yeah, I want to go into a career where I'm going to get paid to take photos <laughs> and go to castings and get told no a lot. Yep. That sounds very promising. That was a very promising decision. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, but I had to just trust where I knew that I could uh, be to my full potential. And I had to trust that God had something more for me than just to mm. take photos. So eventually along my career, which we're at now in my present day, I don't think the same way about my life then yeah. than I do now. And I don't see myself the same way as I do now. So there's been a beautiful over 10 year gap that has helped me learn so much more about myself and my career and, and why I chose my career. So when did you discover you were beautiful? I mean, I was told, I, I was told all your life. You were told not all my life. I, all my told I was told I was very handsome. Okay. I was always told I was very, very handsome. Um, <laughs> okay. Sorry. Uh, when did you discover you were handsome? No. Let me use the masculine <laughs> no. version of the word. Sorry about that. <laughs> but I, I've, I would never, I would, I, would, I I never let it really get to me because I never saw myself as somebody who was like good looking. I just, I was like, okay, people are just very, being very nice. Mm -hmm. They're just being cool. They're sweet and all that. So I never looked at myself and be like, damn, I'm one fine ass. I never said that to myself. So I'm wondering if it's different for men than it is for women, right? Because I mm -hmm. think that we are born into a society where women are very much celebrated for how physically beautiful they are. Mm -hmm. And you guys don't have to be. You just need to be successful. Whereas, like, women, we are told, like, you must be beautiful all the time, right? And so I, like, actually remember the moment. Like, I was in, I think, sixth grade. I got my braces off. I came back with boobs. And all of a sudden, guys were nicer to me. And, like, I remember then being like, oh, I'm attractive now. I got it. Mm -hmm. And so, and I also lost weight from the braces. Like, I was, like, a chubby <laughs> kid my entire life. So, <laughs> so I, there was, like, a moment in time. You never... Felt like, oh, people like the way I look now, or people are being kind to me because of the way I look. Can you I never had that you? realization? Go ahead, please. Okay, so I got into the modeling industry when I was like 20, right? Mm -hmm. So in the modeling industry in that time, you're exposed to a room full of people, mm. full of people who are not only equally attractive, but have been told that they're more attractive than you and are getting paid, be paid more because, you know, <laughs> actually this is our beauty standard. So I would look at myself, I'm like, well, damn, like I thought I was good looking. Mm. I mean, I thought I was good looking enough, but clearly like from the decisions that are being made, like maybe I'm not. And then that's where I was realizing like, well, is my looks depend upon if I get the job or not? Mm. It does it does this qualify me if I'm able to get this job? Is this making me a model or does mm -hmm. this mean I am a model if I get something? And that's where I was toggling with the decision of like, am I a model? Or do I still model because I'm not getting paid for it? Would I do it for free? Would I do it just because I have a just because I could do photo shoots? So those are little questions. So to answer your question, still in my in my industry I had to toggle and differentiate what beaut the beauty beauty to me meant and yeah. what beauty standards were what does beauty to you mean what is beauty beauty to me is authenticity hmm. beauty to me is unapologetic authenticity that's the aura that shines you can see so many people who are not conventionally attractive in the face mm -hmm. to you but you probably wouldn't even touch them mm. be like uh nah vibe is off because because let's face it it's energy yeah our eyes are uh, and our spirit speak to us at the same time, you know, we can see something that really looks like and fits the mold, which I think is a lot of mistakes people happen, mm -hmm. that mistakes happen along relationships where, wow, that's something that I know I can look at every day. <laughs> I can look at that every freaking day. Yeah. And that was the standard of a relationship. It was like, that's why I was like, oh, okay, can I look at this every day? Mm. But realizing there was no, no beauty, no self work. Yeah. So, um, I realized more when I, I when I was beautiful. I, I realized I was beautiful when I realized that I wasn't the most beautiful person. Mm. I was I was very comfortable with just being who I am and who I and and not having to compete and be like, well, I'm more good looking than him. I'm definitely more good looking than him. I'm like, actually, I'm probably the least flyest in the room, but I'm the flyest to myself. Mm. So that's what kind of helps me hold my space in certain spaces because you can talk to me or not talk to me. I could be in the corner and be super chill and 
somebody might look over somebody might not yeah but i'm not i'm not looking for somebody to give me a validation of whether or not i'm attractive or not because i've heard it already but i like to actually feel it mm. Mm. so I, i'm i'm loving that we are connecting right the importance of energy and that it's not necessarily just physical it's also um you know there's a spiritual element to it it's energetic but it is safe to say though because i'm still a realist um <laughs> As we all that are. people who are attractive get certain benefits than people who are not they do people who are attractive do get certain pe- benefits and people who are not but the people who are not attractive treat those benefits different than people who are attractive mm, break that down so it's all about decision making as an attractive person in this industry yes i do get blessed with perks Lots pretty boy perks. privilege pretty boy privilege. <laughs> oh my god yes people oh, broader i want to ask this hey are you interested in this i get increase all the time and i enjoy them but it's how you treat those increase how you treat those decisions that's how you do it talk to me so um more I'm, the, the the i didn't i wasn't given a lot in my beginning in the beginning of my career i didn't book a lot of jobs but i booked the right jobs mm. so while again this to go back this goes back to am i qualified because i'm booking every single job yeah or am i just being fit in the right places so when I apply that into decisions and stuff like that and how we're talking about um, like being like a whole person and mm-hmm. stuff, like what is my decision on how to choose on how I would choose to treat this gift, mm. this brand that gives me this? Am I going to show it value? Am I going to just be like, oh, thanks for the gift? Am I going to like treat so, uh, like a lady comes up to me or something's like, hey, I think you're attractive. Am I going to exchange it another gift or be like, thanks for the gift and bounce? So these are like the, the, the decisions that I had to learn uh, throughout my life that reflected me in, in becoming a better person mm. where I kept on being, okay, what is this? What is the best decision on how we can be in a harmonic frequency here? It's all about harm, harmony and, and equilibrium <sighs> vibration, you know? I love this though, because mm. you just like hit on the money with it being a gift, right? This was something that it wasn't like, you chose this, you were born into this body, this face, this, and yes, you've maintained it throughout the years, I'm sure, all the nice creams and stuff, but it's a gift, it's a blessing that yes, you've gotten privilege from, but I love the way that you're you're holding accountability for how you treat people with that gift. And I think that we're all born with gifts. Some of it's physically present, right? We can sometimes physically see it. Sometimes it's uh, uh, emotional, we can feel it when we're with people. Sometimes it's a skill set, right? It's something that you're doing behaviorally. But how are you serving others? How are you giving back to others? I think is the most important part. And I think that really hits on the money when you're saying what makes a beautiful person. A beautiful person isn't just somebody who like looks good, right? Because you said it's also like um, within, but also how are you showing appreciation and honoring God, the gift that was given to you? Are you using it for good or using it for evil, Mm -hmm. right? Like are you using it for your purpose and spreading love or are you like taking advantage of people and being cruel? So what you're doing also is then making other people feel beautiful by being kind and loving to them and then spreading more beauty. Yes. You're a beauty spreader. That's what that's, <laughs> that's, that's what that's what kind of like my workshop is to sell your look. It's sell your look, not a look. It's yourself, because we all come in so many different forms and different uh, capabilities. But uh, here's where the thing that's that was always humbling to me, uh, which was where I talk about energy and vibration. Everything has a purpose mm-hmm. on manifestation. Everything's a created form of God's thumb uh, fingerprint, right? So even something as simple as somebody who let's say doesn't have a leg or somebody who has a blemish. I have a scar on the side of my cheek that I got when I was like six years old. Mm-hmm. And I had so many doctors and, you know, still gifts. Hey, Brad, I noticed a scar on your cheek. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, I can get that off for you, you know, for free. Just mm-hmm. shout me out. I have so <laughs> many opportunities to get this scar off my cheek. But I'm like, no, this is God's th- fingerprint on me. Mm-hmm. It's like, how do we know that's Broderick? He's got that scar. So I had to learn how to, like, really rock this scar in my career. Yeah. And, um, and identify with it. But what I'm saying is this is how we realize that all of us are flawed Mm. and if we're not flawed we will get flawed you will get tested and you will have scars Mm. how well can you wear your scars how well do you want to look into the camera and photograph Mm. and actually let people see the soul in your eyes and that's because that's what true artistry is 
I don't really identify myself as like an actor or model. I, mm-hmm. I identify myself as an artist because I'm always forever evolving in different versions. So you go into somebody's art home and stuff, uh, somebody's uh, a museum mm-hmm. with one artist, you see so many different versions of their art at so many different times of their life. Yeah. Because it's the vulnerable spot. So in my workshop, I use vulnerability as a point to where people are photographing to where they actually see and connect. So you only need one or two photographs because this one, this is the one that connects. Mm. While a lot of people are taking so many different photographs, it's just swipe, 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 yeah. swipe. Nothing's really connecting. So um, my workshop is really just based upon people getting comfortable with allowing themselves to dig deep and this, actually connect on the soul level and ask themselves these hard questions and look into the camera mm-hmm. and get that photograph and see how beautiful they actually look over trying to like hide when somebody tries to like smize and do all this stuff. <laughs> I always, I, I'm always, Me, I'm like, <laughs> it's, it's like, it's because you're, because you're playing the role. You're playing the role of a, mo- you're playing the role of a beautiful person. But we think we're supposed to like, yeah, really. I didn't want to play the role of a beautiful person. I actually wanted to be a beautiful person mm. and actually vibrate beauty and aura within anything and everything I was uh, dealing with in the industry. So I just truly feel like that's the key to, being uh something authentic is to allowing yourself to wear wear scars you know look a little effed up sometimes it's it's (laughs) a-okay you teach this class right who is the type of person that would come to a class like this what Mm -hmm. who's this class for uh the class is for anybody who's really just trying to get themselves out in the world of social media that's what that's what we have we go we go we go to google we go to tiktok Mm -hmm. and we go to to, uh, instagram there's only a few things where you could look and see how somebody chooses to represent themselves. Mm-hmm. And one thing we all have in common is photos. Yep. We all take photos, whether you have a lot of photos or one or one photo. Everybody has taken a photo. And at some point in time, you're going to want to take a photo. Mm-hmm. You're going to need a, a document that shows where you are at this time that you're going to love to look at. So, so you're teaching essentially like the art of taking a photo, like how to master photography? No, I'm teaching the art of mastering self. I'm Thank teaching you. the art of mastering yeah, self through photography and through marketing <laughs> yeah. yourself. No, it's about self. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's much deeper than that, right? But so, because it's about it's about you, th- the character, your yeah. soul. The motto is recognize your gifts and maximize them. Mm. Recognize your gifts and maximize them. So when you become more vulnerable into yourself and you see things yourself, you become more confident in pushing yourself to do the things that you actually love to do. Like for example, I was on Facebook one time. And I saw this lady that makes cat sweaters. And she makes $300,000 a month off cat sweaters. This is like years ago, right? <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm I, in I was, the wrong industry. I was, scrolling, I was scrolling on Facebook. <laughs> I was like, it was, it was this like highlight thing. This like cool little video. And this lady, she made a cat a, a cat sweater for her, um, her cat. And then apparently she just, people started asking her. So then she made it into a business. Mm. But she said, I just love knitting my cat sweaters. Yeah. So people started asking me. So I'm like, yo. You have a gift and you use it to maximize. And now you have you make other people feel good about mm-hmm. dressing their cats up. What are you doing? You're giving a healthy vibration to another living creature yep. like a cat yep. or a dog or anybody. So I take that into everything being a living form, whether it's a tree, whether it's a plant, some, it's a, an injured, an, an injured fly. Like I'm not <laughs> God. Well, I'm just saying I don't choose. I just choose not to interrupt anything where it is on its path. Mm. I, I choose not to try to intervene and think I'm going to be, I'm, I'm making something fixed. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. making something work. So that's why I'm saying uh, in terms of to bring, to bring all this in, what I'm saying is we cannot always think that we're doing the right thing mm-hmm. and, go, and going the right way in terms of how we're treating people and how we're doing things like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Decision-making wise. Well, it so. sounds kind of like, I mean, this, this sounds similar to what I do, but you're doing it, um, uh, visually through like media and photography but like I start with like the self right like who mm-hmm. are you what do you want what do you have to offer how do you show up mm-hmm. and and helping people with their authentic, authentic self when it comes to finding their purpose mate their life partner yeah and if you don't know who you are you will be misled with who you know and make the wrong you know choice it sounds like you're doing that in your industry as well like who you show and present is not going to be the best version if you don't tap into self 
Yeah. We're in the same industry, essentially. Well, we, we're all connected. <laughs> Everything's connected. <laughs> I can, every single thing, no matter what somebody's doing, even even our, even our guy over here doing the video stuff. He's, Shout out to Joseph. Joseph is, is <laughs> like, what, where would we be in, in this spot without Joseph? Just Facts. I you need know I Joseph. Mean? <laughs> and what's your name? I'm sorry. Vanessa. Vanessa. V. V, not, see, and V's just sitting in the cut, just adding to the vibe. Yeah. So, we have to look and, and see and adhere to certain things that don't have anything to do with us. Even in our relationships, like some things really just do not have to do do with us. And we don't have to give the energy to it to expect a response out of it. Mm -hmm. See, I think that's the messed up thing. We all want responses. We're all looking and waiting for a response. But no response is the best response. I, I, I totally No feel communication that way. is a form of communication. I, man, it's because when you think about it, nature itself is so beautiful uninterrupted we are forms of nature love it uninterrupted at times just leave it uninterrupted let it work itself and then let it breathe and see what it flows flows into before just pushing in like to react and get her, and you know meditate right now with broderick <laughs> not even meditate just just take a moment moments with broderick I want my moments to look chiseled like your moments when <laughs> when you take a moment. I'm like, I want the <laughs> Broderick. You look great. Okay, you I look mean, great already, Mama. I, you know what? I love you. Your Thank husband. you for saying that. <laughs> he is a very lucky man. No, I'm saying. <laughs> Broderick, look, it it has to be hard though. Um, being right uh, in the industry that you're in, the background that you have, right? Being now this more elevated, higher level conscious person. Uh, who doesn't just see it from a superficial, like physical standpoint, but then also seeing people obsess with social media and how they look in the world and losing self. Mm -hmm. How do you stay grounded when you are on social media and you're seeing all your timeline and all these people who are posing for attention and you know, wanting to put themselves out there so that they can be accepted. Like, how are you processing that? Is it like, I need more, I need to fix all this bad in the world. I'm never trying to fix anything. I don't fix, I'm not a fixer. I can't fix anybody's life. I've already tried to, and it fails every time. <laughs> <laughs> And I've asked, and I know, and, and I've wanted people to fix my life, mm -hmm. and they try to, and it fails every time. We can only fix ourselves. So whenever I see that, I just always just add a, I, I believe in consciousness plays mm -hmm. a key, you know, send a conscious prayer, say, I hope we find our way. Mm -hmm. Because if she finds her way, I find my way. If mm -hmm. you find your way, I find my way. If I find my way, you'll find your way. So I always just say, like, I hope we find our way. Mm -hmm. So you're like praying for people on the ground. I mean, we have to. <laughs> We're giving out prayers. Just like, I just, I, I, I can't intervene. I'm not in, in a space right now where I wish to intervene on anything. I only wish to kind of sit and be present and observe. And that's how I just do my career and that's how I do my life now. I'm more of an observer and I take action. So when I'm taking action, I'm more so taking action in terms of what I can do to help my vibration and to be, um, to still stand out while all this other shit is going on. And somebody else can be doing this, but I can only control me and I can only make my own decisions. So I just look at ways to watch from afar. And that's, as a Capricorn, that's the hardest thing. Cause as a what? As a Capricorn. As the best sign? As the in caps. The, world, the Alpha and the Omega? <laughs> you mean the yin and the yang? <laughs> Just give me some time to cook, mama. I love, I've, I'll, that's one thing, the new thing I'm diving into is a yin and yang. I love uh, divi di diving into my divine masculine and my divine feminine. Yes, they are within you both know, of us. It's just like, it's, it's so beautiful to experience. And I'm like exercising in different types of ways. Yeah. Uh, within myself, mm -hmm. within my, you know, with just myself. And that's what the beautiful thing is. Like, I don't really need too much energy around me. And, and now I think you can celebrate both, right? Like, find mm -hmm. different ways and avenues to celebrate masculine and feminine. Yeah. Um, you recently had maybe a challenging decision to make. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. I want you to, like, kind of talk about it with us. But, like, you had to essentially sever a, a tie with, partnership recently yeah you were engaged mm -hmm. I was engaged and called it off what happened well I mean I've been through several relationships where I've where something's been called off mm -hmm. so 
Um, when it comes down to an engagement or anything, that's just a point in time where we're trying to get to. We're trying to get to an engagement. We're trying to get to a marriage. We're trying to get to a life together. Mm -hmm. So um, calling off something at a point in time or seeing something was off at a point in time doesn't necessarily mean it was off. It just means it just we we're, we're no longer choosing to go forward. It's just a decision. Mm -hmm. Like as time goes on, I still have my present body and anybody else who has been in my life still has their present body, you know, relationships, friendships, they're all relationships. So, um, some things are harder to sever than the others, but when it comes down to the severity of like a subject, like a, a wife or a husband mm -hmm. or a best friend, you look at those things, it's like, wow, did I lose a wife? Did I lose a fiance? Did I lose a friend? Did we lose each other like what did we lose anything and it's like no there was nothing that was cut off it was just something that was discontinued mm. and um their life continues my life continues and we all make the decisions to become better continued so that's just that's the way I looked at it and that's why I was um able to kind of see my life a little bit differently going forward mm -hmm. because I knew that if God didn't necessarily have a, any more purpose for me he would have killed me <laughs> so I'm not dead I have life, I have a breath, and I have a consciousness, and I have more connections, and I realize one thing about me, I am not perfect mm. at all. I'm probably the least perfect. As a matter of fact, I would pray that anybody scurries to find something better, because you only know what's better for you if you truly do the work and just do the, the, the things that are, are required to show you, like, this is actually what I need and what I want, and I'm still cooking, so... I'm probably what some people want, probably what nobody wants, but I want myself, so I'm cool with it. You had a big like epiphany when you were pursuing basketball and then having to like take a moment to realize you're not going in that direction, right? You're mm -hmm. not going the athletic route. Right. Did it kind of feel like that when you had to call off the engagement? I thought my life was gonna look like this. Yeah. How do I <laughs> redirect? It's, How does one redirect? This is where I realize that life is vibrational and we have to continue to follow the follow the tests. It's all tests. Everything's a test. Everything is a test, man, and it's all timing. That's why we have like these retrogrades and stuff. So I was always faced with not necessarily the same situation, mm -hmm. but the same type of decision. Like after you've invested so much time and done so much in something, when or do you choose to cop out or do you choose to take a breath or how do you choose to take the next action mm -hmm. in this next moment because the past the past even five minutes ago whatever the heck we were talking about is gone we're on this subject yep. now so here and now is the decisions that we all have to make so when it came down to that in particular I did reflect back to okay when was my last break when did I, I broke my leg Okay, I broke up with basketball. Okay, I kind of broke up with modeling. I definitely broke up in a few relationships. Like, where where are these breaks? Mm -hmm. And how's and, and and what is the the vastness of these breaks? Mm -hmm. Are these are they are they are they starting small and getting bigger and bigger and bigger, or are they just kind of just working away? So I started just studying the, how the vibration of how it made me feel, and relating to when I could feel the same way I felt in that moment. And the only way I could really feel like, well, damn, when's the last time I truly stopped or couldn't love anymore? And I was like, mm. basketball, shit, damn. I haven't said this in 10 years. Where did this come from? So I was like, okay. You have to make a decision. Who cut off the engagement? Um, it was, and, and honestly, it was a mutual thing. I don't even think it was a who or what. I think it was a lot of things that were just happening on on mutual sides that where we were trying our best and that's all I can ask for. So, um, all I know is like, you know, there's, you know, the, the rings and stuff, there's mm -hmm. no rings, no rings, no things. So, um, yeah, I'll just say that it was a mutual, mutual decision and yeah. How do you know when you're growing apart, when to fight harder for that thing that you desire or when to let go? Right. Like you made the decision mutually with her. We're going to release. But somebody else may say, I need to fight for this. And like, you know, we need to make this work by any means necessary. Uh, I want you to give that advice to someone who may be grappling with like, well, we spent so much time together and we made this like big milestone. Maybe we should fight for it more versus like, no, maybe you should let it go. 
How do you know which way to go? Oh, man. The only answer I can say to that is unconditional love. Love to the fullest under all conditions. All conditions. Just forgive. Keep forgiving until you can't forgive no more. That's the only way you're going to know. Because if there's a part in you that still is going to return, you will return. Facts on facts on facts. You will return. <laughs> That's why I say don't burn like, like don't burn the bridge all the way down. Just kind of heat it up a little bit. If you're not true, if you're just, if you're if you're if you're mad, just heat the bridge up. Don't burn it down because mm. you might still want to cross it. Dude, do you know how many clients I have that they will say, OK, today's the day I'm going to break up with them. I'm going to let them go. And I'm like, no, you're not. You're going to be here again next week. You're going to come back next month. You have not been hurt enough. You have not gone through enough of the growing pains yet to actually make a decision to walk away, to mm-hmm. actually really do it. Yeah. So let's not play. Let's not pretend. <laughs> and sometimes those people aren't, you can't fight. Sometimes people aren't fully there, though. They're not fully there. They're like Because you, you, you're it's one thing I know about my life now. Everything's a mirror image. And I'm surrounded by a lot of mirrors. And if I'm ever exposed to something that doesn't necessarily reflect what I like or what I truly feel for myself, I just slowly start to remove myself. But lately, I've been surrounded by so many mirrors, and I invest in certain ways to stay around those mirrors, certain things that I like myself, too. Mm -hmm. So when you're in relationships, your friends and your people that are around you do have a very big reflection because we are 70% water, right? And water is influenced by anything. Like, I can pray over this water or I could say hateful things over this water and if you put a microscope over it the molecularness of it will change Mm -hmm. and that's exactly how we are so even the things that we get advice from and the people that we feel like are having our best interests and that we allow to dissect and download into us it plays a big difference until you fully severally remove yourself and go into that space of where do I find myself I can unconditionally love this person more or continue to continue un, un, uh, unconditionally love this person. Or if I do unconditionally love this person, what happens when you take all this stuff off? Like, what happens if I, if my, half my face fucks up tomorrow? Mm-hmm. What happens if, if you know, if, if something happens to my legs? What happens if, if something happens to your podcast? What happens in the house? You know, I just think that that's the only way unconditional, unconditionally, you know, when it's time to go, and when you can unconditionally walk away, with no conditions. You can do whatever the heck you want after I leave. <laughs> go ahead please go ahead my, my back is turned <laughs> you're not hurting me anymore because i'm no longer looking at you yeah you're look. you're you, this these are all decisions you're making for yourself and this is where i realize the karmatic stuff happens the intent in our decisions when no one's looking around reflects on what's going to happen in the present just because you do it behind closed doors doesn't mean it goes undocumented facts and on facts just on because facts. And just because it goes unsaid <laughs> Doesn't mean nobody doesn't know. And this is why usually it comes to the light, though. There's always this, we can call it karma, we can say that it circles back, we can, but it usually becomes present again. I just, I usually just don't, I, I know, in all of my relationships, I've known so much stuff and I just don't say anything. I just don't, I just because, just because I say something doesn't mean you're going to change your action. Mm-hmm. It just means I show, I'm showing you like, hey, I see what you're doing. If it's already need to continue doing it, great, but. One thing I practice that put me in my power place is by knowing information and just not saying something unless I really let it bother me. And that's where I realize what do I want to let bother me? And if I can increase whatever I'm going to let bother me, whatever I'm going to let me get reaction, if I can increase the height on that, that's increasing my vibration because I stand on top of whatever, I, whatever's, whatever's under me can't fuck with me. If I stand on top of it, so I'm like, okay, in my life, I'm like if my partner was to go and do X, Y, Z, would that put me under? Mm-hmm. My decision is no, I can't let that put me under. So I always put up under. So I go into unconditionally, how can I increase the way my mind and my body is to not let the decisions of somebody affect how I'm going to feel? That is something extremely hard to master, though, because a lot yes. of us generate um, our self-perception and self-worth based off of someone's acceptance of us. It's very hard. And because you, because we all want to be loved and we all want to, uh, we all want something that's going to give us the, the vibration of love that we, that we feel. And even, even as a man in my, in my place, in my stature, I do find it very hard connecting with uh, women who think and feel and see certain things the way I do, because these are things that I care about. But I'm not going to force and food speed someone and make it, hey, I need you to be like this and make it make sense. I have to trust and know that 
if there is a mirror, if there's someone in, someone like me, then I have to trust that in that timing that will come across. But if I focus on trying to make the decision to make a piece make sense, like putting bad art in your home, you're trying to make a bad <laughs> piece of art make sense. Just get the art piece out and wait for the right piece that's going to make sense. Then your home is going to be beautiful and you're probably not going to make no adjustments forever. Meanwhile, you're still trying to just put all this art, just all this shit that's just not even making sense, but you're just trying to make it into a home and nothing makes sense. So I just feel like and timing makes sense. And that's one thing I realized I, I moved. When I moved, I was taking my time getting my home together. I wasn't just rushing. OK, I need a bed. I need this because, you know, I got I'm going to be having guests over that. I was like, no, no, no. Let me work what I have. Let me make sure this place has my thing, my fingerprint mm-hmm. on it. Let me have, just have my, this have my look, this have my touch. This, do we know this is Broderick's house when we walk in here? Human design. Mm-hmm. Um, this is that was what I was trying to think of earlier when we were talking. <laughs> it just hit me. Uh, when you speak about thumbprint, I'm like, oh, human design was what I was just having a conversation with someone about. I'm not going to circle to that because I have another question for you. You're but I, it finally hit me. I was like, what would I just um, talk about with someone? Okay. Sorry. Sidebar, guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> him and I were having a conversation earlier. And he was referencing um, the thumbprint. And I was like, oh, I was just talking about this with someone. But the things that you're saying right now are resonating, which is partially why I haven't chosen a coffee table in like two years. My, my living room does not have a coffee table because I – don't want to mess up the beautiful art that's in my house that my sister created Mm -hmm. and i'm still being patient for the right coffee table but i'm not being lazy about it i'm doing my research i'm still looking i'm keeping my energy open and i'm letting folks know but i am ready to receive my coffee table when my coffee table appears (laughs) it's like i'm ready for it when it comes (laughs) but i want to know more importantly what did the healing process look like for you right you made the decision like we are not in alignment and we're going to go our separate ways. How did you, and what does that recovery process look like? How do you get back to self? Because when we're in relationship, sometimes our identity feels because of our partnership, like we are connected. We're a package. Mm -hmm. How did we get back to self and release and heal? I, well, how I did it, I didn't play the victim. Mm -hmm. I took all accountability. I was like, okay, well, if this relationship or whatever thing is over, I've, where I could have done this right, I could, all, all the way down to the point of not even asking you to be in my life. That's where I take the accountability because it's all decisions. It's all decisions. You cannot be mad at somebody else just because of the decision that you made to invite them into your house or invite them to your home. Some shit gets stolen. Some shit gets fucked up. You invited <laughs> them into your home. So I asked you to be my girlfriend. I asked you to be a wife. Mm-hmm. I asked you to be my friend. I asked you to be my chef. I asked if we can go to this restaurant. I asked if I can get this car. I inquired about this, about this stock. Yeah. I've making all the decisions in my life. If I choose to be in a situation long enough to see where it's destructive and like, oh my God, what the heck happened? Wow. I stayed too long. It wasn't as destructive as it was back there. Mm. That's back there. We had a, we had a flat tire. Now the whole fucking coupe is on fire. (laughs) (laughs) The Corvette is gone. The Ferrari (laughs) is in the lake. (laughs) Should have just parked the shit and gotten and got the Rolls Royce. We should we should just switch vehicles. Yeah. Or switch gears. I just took full. I take full, full, full accountability in any in every relationship that I've been in, both past, present, and all that. I was like, wow, I could have been such a better person, and I didn't know then what I know now. So now what I do now is like. I'm just patient now. I'm like, okay, well, the next time around, I'm going to make sure I do it like this. I'm going to try to do it like this. And just be patient with that. Don't try to like, I'm not trying to like go like fill in, don't fill in the blanks. Mm. Don't don't try to fill in the blanks. Just allow time. That's where I feel like I learned the best because anytime I tried to make a quick fix, quick end. Like these days I'm breathing. These days I'm just focusing on. You, you made me travel back in time when you said the accountability piece, which I think we don't do enough of. And we miss that portion of our personal healing process when we don't take the role that we played in where we're at s- serious enough when we don't acknowledge it. And you took me like it, as you said it, I traveled back in time to when I let go, got let go from a company and I was broken hearted. I hadn't felt that pain. I know this sounds crazy, but I hadn't felt that pain since my father had passed. 
and I was so attached to the idea of the 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 role that I was going to be um, in like in this position and how hard I worked for it. It took me years to get this position. And I wound up being let go from the company, which was like the best thing to ever happen to me. But I didn't know that at the time. And my husband was like, you're going to continue feeling this pain, being let go, being rejected and thrown away, right? Until you take accountability for why they let you go. And mm-hmm. I was like, what? No, they missed out on the best thing that ever happened to them. He's like, did they? Like, let's break down like how they came to this decision. And when we started to like break it down and I was able to reflect and get out of, you know, my own way of the emotions of what I was feeling and actually like unpack like, well, you know, my time management (laughs) or, you know, I did break one of, you know, the rules in the company, but I felt like because I was so great that that should be overlooked. And he was like, no, he was like, you led to (laughs) your being let go. Mm -hmm. And my healing process could not begin until I started to accept that until I started to say like, I made a choice to be at that company. Mm-hmm. I made a choice to do what I did. I made a choice to show up in the way that I did and have this relationship with them. I played a role in it. You also decided how hard you wanted to go. All of these things played mm-hmm. a role, yeah. right? And I don't think that we do that enough when it comes to relationship. Even if something was unjust to us, we still made a conscious choice to be in relationship with whatever that incident is. Because sometimes people will be like, well, I, you know, that happened to me, but I got like go unfairly but no you made a choice to be there and there's always risk in any choice that you make right it's not it's never going to be perfect so i do think that like you're right about that the healing begins in the accountability factor Mm -hmm. and it's also like you said the risks like what are what are you scared of the risk of loving somebody (laughs) are you scared of the risks of like but no we're scared of getting hurt we're scared of the reciprocation that's what it is bro that's the that's the problem we're all in a space of like, well, what am I getting out of it? What am I going to get out of this? Yeah. What if you get nothing out of it? What if you just get yourself out of it? Is that not enough? Are you not enough to just come out with yourself? Mm. Wow. You don't find yourself that valuable enough to say like, damn, if I don't come out of this, I'm losing a part of me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Did you see the side eye that he just gave? Okay. That's, that's, but that's a decision. Yeah. It's a decision. I stopped making decisions saying like I'm I'm less of something if I'm if I don't get this job, mm-hmm. if I don't get this partner, if I don't get this kiss, if I don't get that car, if I don't whatever, fuck it. <laughs> Isn't my less it? No, no. Every I'm I keep I wake up and say, damn, it feels good to be broader, Gunner. That's why I say I'm like, damn, it feels good to be broader today. Because somebody would love to be in my shoes. And guess what? Somebody, I'm, I'm thinking like, damn, I wonder what it would be like. I look out my window, I'm like, damn, I wonder what it would be like to wake up in that hill. I don't know who lives there. Mm-hmm. But I'm imagining like, damn, I wish I had that view. I don't know who lives there. Somebody's there. But we all have aspirations of being somewhere or wanting to be on something or mm-hmm. whatever. If you can't be so good with yourself without all that, then you've lost the game. You got to be good with yourself without it. And also, you got to be able to give yourself, give it to yourself before you ask for it from somebody else. I would never ask somebody to give me something I couldn't give myself. I, I have a thing, like, I get gifts and stuff from brands and stuff. Well, I still go shop at those places. <laughs> <laughs> I still go, I would still go buy something because I'm not, you. because if I was only used to saying, oh, well, I get those for free. I get mm-hmm. that for free. I get this. You're not even you're not putting in the work to even know what it feels like to invest in work to actually put your own it. You don't own it. Anything gifted is owned. If I'm gifting you love, you don't mm-hmm. own it. It's just it's a gift. It's an exchange. Gifts are exchanged. Some people are out here just gifting love. I'll gift you some love. I'll gift you some love. I'll gift you love. I'll gift you love. <laughs> OK, well, you're still expecting something. In exchange. <laughs> there needs to be a return. Yes. So <laughs> it's not real love, bro. <laughs> It's not real. Do you think love should be unconditional? That love is unconditional. That there's God no expectancy. Me unconditionally. I'm, I fucked up so many times in my life, and he still and he still gives me blessings. Why would I? Why why can't I do the same? Why can't I do a little bit of the same? That's what God talks about being be like me, be like God, think like. It's not about whether or not we're. He, God wants nothing back from us, and we always fail. But in romantic relationship, I think that we can experience love, and want to and believe that we love someone unconditionally 
But I think that we are not God yet in the sense of, okay, well, God lives within us, but I do not think that we have mastered the unconditional part. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is because usually our love does have conditions, right? Mm -hmm. We can say that, and I'm just going to challenge you on this because I want healthy like, debate. Let's just say that you loved your ex unconditionally. Mm -hmm. You still made a choice to release and you may still feel the emotions of love, the sentiment of love. But because I believe that love is an action and a decision that you make putting forth towards someone every day, could it really be unconditional love if the conditions are no longer you guys pouring into each other anymore? I never needed her pot in the first place. If she needed my pot, then that's her decision. I needed your pot. I never needed her pot. I never needed anybody's pot. I never, all my friendships, like when you say ex, like I know we're talking about like my recent stuff, but Big any, any ex, any, any yeah. ex, it's like, I've never gone into anything thinking like, okay, what can I get out of this pot? Like, I love to see pots just pour alone. Like I look at people as like, as, as waterfalls, like what happens if I just don't put my cup under here? Just like, just look at the waterfall. Like if I can't leave the waterfall and, and admiring the beauty of the waterfall, I never appreciated the waterfall. It's okay. Like it doesn't, it never needed the waterfall was there before I got there. It'll be there when I leave. And if it's still there when I leave, great. But if I can't walk away from the waterfall with the same appreciation that I had getting into it, then what is the point of me even coming to the damn waterfall? So what's the point of me getting into, into a relationship of only looking to experience this, gaining something out of it? So yeah, I can totally wish somebody well, see them like all that and, and completely be okay with, um, with not saying like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to put put more investment into you. I'm going to come and make this time. I've gotten enough. There, I, there's certain food that I used to love that I don't eat anymore, but I still respect anybody who enjoys <laughs> it. <laughs> I don't go to that restaurant anymore, but you do, and that's fire. I, I hope that restaurant expands, it grows. I don't eat there anymore. But at one point in time, this restaurant provided so much for me and did so much when I needed it at those times. Imagine what it would have been without those times. You, get, you fill in those blanks without those times. So you and I, I think, see love a little bit differently. You see love as a, a sentiment, an emotion, and I see it as a verb. Um, sure. I mean, I... And that's okay. Yeah. I just uh, uh, love hearing how people describe, like, their beliefs around love. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this is why I think it's important to have conversations even around love and relationship. Because if you and I, like, hypothetically, if you and I... <laughs> decided we were going to start dating right we have two different ways that like we believe love is demonstrated or how love shows up or even how you handle partnership and so certain needs would not be getting met because we have two different value systems when it comes to our interpretations of love mm -hmm. and we would wake up one day and be like oh we don't <laughs> see it eye to eye we should have talked about this early on now here's what, <laughs> now, now here's 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 the, i love this now here's where we get i'm not a relationship expert <laughs> uh, by the way I, this is how i've this is how i just how i see it and what i've learned now here's where we get into terms and conditions terms and conditions terms and conditions like if we're going to do this xyz there are certain hats that need to be worn mm. If I can fulfill X, Y, Z hats in my own life and in your life, guess what? We have all these hats here. Yeah. But let's say you want to bring your hat over to this side and it doesn't disrupt and it doesn't take away from whatever that hat is on there. Like, hey, take this hat. I already got plenty over here. Mm -hmm. You put this hat on this side of the relationship. You wear this hat. It's all good. But some people aren't wearing enough hats in terms of the terms and conditions. Mm -hmm. Some people like when we, when we are in love and stuff like that. Uh, people just want to be on, on the receiving end and it's like you're waking up and you think that okay well I don't have anything to do to reciprocate into this pot like you lower yourself you feel like yeah, I can like take a back seat mm -hmm. and that's where I feel like it becomes a little odd because I never wanted to be in a relationship where I'm like well I used to do all this I don't have to do that no more type shit that that's where we lower ourselves as people and we don't hold ourselves to the same standards that we did when we met is be, being equally yoked is forever evolving and forming as you go along the path where you're not taking away or or or, or something's being stripped from from the other what i looked at equally yoke in the yin and yang is that throughout the course of time no matter what that's that, that point you know you have the yin and yang those mm -hmm. dots no matter what no you don't know which side is which 
but it's it's molded and it's all co cohesive and it's coverse because all of the terms and conditions what makes uh, what makes this whole is all connected and it's not being stripped and it's not being taken away so that's why i look at relationships of like really owning into your terms and conditions being truthful about what, you, what you're coming yep. in with and being truthful about what you're going out with and not and, and not breaking that you know working to always keep in home that that's the promise you make so I think it's just really just about really holding your true, honest promise. As a Capricorn, we know about that. <laughs> holding your promise until you cannot hold that shit no more. Yeah. I'm just, <laughs> at, at this point in time, I can no longer meet these terms and conditions. And I know I cannot. So I am going to have to wish this well. <laughs> <laughs> but I, And see, I would say that the terms and conditions of the relationship, right, like, it would feel like the person was not in love with you anymore. Yeah, and that's okay. That's okay because that's that's what that's. But where we talked. We spoke to unconditional love, though. Yeah. So if it didn't have condition, so this is why my debate is like that. It does have conditions because the terms and the uh, terms of agreement are the conditions. So like, I'll give you an example. If me and my husband decided we were going to go separate ways tomorrow. I would still love who he was as a person, right? I could mm -hmm. still love him as a being. But I would not be in love with him because I believe being in love requires me to be doing acts of service, to pouring into his cup, to growing him right. and vice versa. So if I'm no longer doing those things, we are not demonstrating the things that people who make a conscious decision every day and choose love to be there for one another would be doing. So I could love him. I could have love for him, but I would not be in love with him anymore. I Unless I could that. be serving him, right? Because we started this whole thing off with like serving others is love. Well, you, <laughs> but you're also you're also in a binding marriage. You're yes. in a marriage like that's some you you have like you you make you you as your as a woman as a man you make it you you do whatever the conversations and everything we all know that what that comes like you know retrograde we be lowering our vibrate some shit be happening I get it but when you're in a marriage. And you say, yes, I do and all that. These are all the things that where it's like, hey, if this is a part of the work, it's a part of the work. Yeah. But guess what? Sometimes even the breakup is a part of the work in your life. Yeah. You can't be attached to being like, well, damn, if this is over, why are we so scared of something being over? Yeah. The world has ended many times. And this is the world. So you're saying don't be afraid of the, oh, being can't over. Be, I can't. Well, I, yeah, you can't. Well, you can't be a, not don't be over afraid of an end result. Afraid of a result. Well, damn, we might break up. Mm hmm. Okay. Well, if you're supposed to break up, why are you not allowing somebody to have the decision, mm. the decision yeah. to even give themselves the right as an able-bodied person? That's robbery. I don't steal neither. <laughs> <laughs> I don't steal. I don't steal. But that's robbery if you think about it because you're not allowing somebody, you're robbing somebody of the decision to have an opinion. But you're also, if you're going into it with that fear, you're robbing yourself of what it like potentially could fully be. Everybody getting yeah, robbed. Everybody's getting robbed. Everybody getting robbed. <laughs> everybody's getting Everybody, robbed. We all getting shit stolen. So why don't we all just <laughs> stop stealing from each other? <laughs> stop stealing vibes. Stop stealing hearts. Just stop stealing, guys. Let's all just be, let's all just make, just do honest work, authentic yeah. work. If you're broke, just be broke. If you got money, spend it or, or hold it. But just hone in on where you are and be okay with that. If you have trauma, it's okay. Hone in your trauma. If you have abandonment issues, it's okay. Sit in that and just, and just be okay with that. I had so many problems in my life where I would talk over people. I would say I, I, I had a cussing problem. I used like so many things in my career where I was like, damn, like that's how I used to act. And I looked at old videos. I was like, damn, I did not like that guy. I don't like that guy. I'm like, okay, well, I like this guy now. Yeah. So in a relationship, like, like, like be a version of yourself yesterday that you're like, oh, I don't, I'm not, I'm off that. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Like just continually making the effort to be like, you know, I'm off that. That's yesterday. I'm off that. It's continuous growth. Continuous. I, I made a story about versions. Like, you know, we're all about um, completing something. I don't feel like, I don't feel like, I don't believe in completing jobs. I don't, I feel like versions, like art. Like that's Muhammad Ali art over there. That's a version of multiple Muhammad Ali joints. That's Bob Marley. I've seen multiple pictures of, of Muhammad Ali. So when I look at life and relationship as art, I look at it as canvases at points in times that were just authentic. Like, remember this picture right here when you had to look me in the eye and tell me those harsh words and I had to just sit there. You remember that? We were on the couch. Remember we were at that concert? And da, da da da. These are the times in our life, even the ugly ones, where 
it's important to just put ourselves into the most present state and be like, you know what, this is just what it is. And that's what's going to allow you to not be attached to a an end or a, a thing to happen for you to be happy. And you can help us get better at this in your class? I can help you. <laughs> I can help you identify with yourself. <laughs> I can help. I can help you. Like, like I, I believe in social. Here's how my class works. Like, I help you. I help you look at yourself through the camera and a lens to give you confidence to share your passions that will add to your vibration. So if you're somebody who wants to learn how to be comfortable getting in front of the camera, taking photos and representing yourself mm-hmm. because people are going to look at your pictures. That's what it is. And then using now that you're comfortable being from again now being from the camera, now using your gifts and sharing these things and using uh, uh, your platforms to for people to draw into you because all just starts with a photograph. You know, I'm in a white t-shirt, white beater right now. And my prime example was like going into the industry, like you put me and me and a hundred other guys in a room and we all have white wife beaters on, mm-hmm. but there's a ten thousand dollar job on the table. Who in the white yeah. wife beater is going to get picked? Like how do you stand out? Yep. And that's all you have. So not I didn't intentionally wear a white wife beater, but <laughs> But it's, your point is like what makes you yeah, different? You have, How do you know? You need to be confident in what makes you different. And that's so subtlety. It's your vibration. It's your energy. It's your aura. It's that groundwork. The groundwork of forgiving. The groundwork of looking somebody in the eyes and being honest with yourself. The groundwork of of of, of not being afraid to step in front of a photo. or not. Like, just all groundwork mm-hmm. increases your aura. That shadow work it increases your aura and allows you to stand out amongst where your throat chakra is activated. Be, be, uh, even when you speak and even when you talk to people, it's different. Like, I'm very grateful to be on your show, but I don't know what other models you've had on your show. <laughs> I don't know what other, you know, I'm like, like, but you, but you, you saw something in me. Alyssa saw something in me. Yes. I said, yo, this would be a good fit. That's the art of branding. My workshop is about self branding. You have to brand yourself in this, in this world. And the real branding comes from the self work, mm-hmm. you Facts. know? Facts on facts on facts, the self work. Okay, I want people to be able to um, consume your content, to be able to learn from your mastery. You have to share with everybody where they can find you, Mm -hmm. uh, what they need to like click and subscribe to, where do they go? Give your social handle out, your websites, all of the above. Yeah, um, my uh, Instagram is Broderick Hunter, uh, TikTok Broderick Hunter. X now, aka Twitter. Uh, <laughs> so, Roderick Hunter, my master class is www.sellyourlook.com. Uh, and I have events coming up for that as well. So, um, yeah, I'm also going to be on Clubhouse again soon talking about uh, the similar things we're talking about, yeah. how to, how to uh, create a self brand and maximize off of being in, a, in an industry where we're in social media now. So, I would say, like, my equivalent to me being going to castings now is like what social media is. So you have all these influencers, all these people with yeah. profiles, all these people with followers. How do you stand out? So that's where I'm, that's where I come into play with helping people stand out as being an individual, a beautiful individual or someone who's, you know, just a person in the world, but it's, it's all selling your look and it's all, it, it, can, it all works. I love it. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me. You guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my IG at Spicy Mati. Go to the spicylife.com. Click and subscribe. Share this episode with a friend. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy Life.